Hi, Motley Fool Analyst Rex Moore here at the unveiling of the new Chevy Tahoe and Suburban in New York City. And it was a nice event here today. And joining me now to talk about it through the miracle of the videotape editing process is our own senior auto analyst, John Rosevere. John, first, uh, give me your take on the overall event today. Well, Rex, it's clear that GM took an evolutionary approach rather than a revolutionary approach here. And it's just like they did with the new Chevy Silverado pickup. And that was probably the right way to go. On the one hand, they, the new trucks do look fresh and updated. But on the other hand, you can see them half a mile away and know that you're looking at a Tahoe or a Suburban. Uh, that can cut both ways. It can tend to deflate expectations a little. With the pickups, a lot of us looked at the photos in the first reveal and said, huh, they don't look much different from the old trucks. Maybe GM didn't push hard enough. Maybe they didn't do enough to get ahead of Ford. But it it turned out there were a lot of subtle improvements that made themselves apparent as people got to drive them, and the reviews turned out to be quite strong, and sales have been very good. I suspect these are going to play out the same way. Uh, the interiors are clearly much nicer than the outgoing versions. That's so important right now, but it's not a surprise. GM got the clue on interiors a few years ago. It looks like they did a solid job on that front, and you know, recent Chevy interiors like the new Impalas have been very good, so the expectations were high, and they appear to have met them. Uh, they made the new 5.3 liter V8 standard. I thought that was kind of interesting no V6 option. Uh, but with the pickup, they've been able to make a lot of advertising hay out of the fact that this new V8 is more fuel efficient than Ford's EcoBoost V6 that they use in their pickups as the, the, the sort of the, the high power green option. So it probably makes sense to make it the only drivetrain here. They haven't released fuel economy numbers yet, but it's a safe bet that between the new engine and the aerodynamic improvements they talked about, that those fuel economy numbers will be at least somewhat better than the old Tahoe and the old Suburban. So really nothing surprising here. Uh, we won't know for sure until we get to drive them, but it looks to me like GM did what they needed to do to preserve what is actually a pretty important franchise for them, and they did it to a pretty high standard, and I expect that the folks who buy these vehicles will be pretty pleased when, when all is said and done. Okay, now you had a chance uh, to see what the interior is like, the exteriors. Um, do you think this is enough of an improvement for General Motors over the predecessors? You know, I think so. Again, these are evolutionary, not revolutionary designs, but they check the right boxes and I think they'll do well. Fuel economy should be somewhat better with that new 5.3 V8, which has the cylinder deactivation, a bunch of other good fuel saving technologies, and the aerodynamic changes like the way the doors fit and so forth will help mileage a bit as well. And these are huge SUVs built on truck frames with V8 engines. They're never going to get 50 miles to the gallon, but every little bit helps and when you're talking a move from, say, 20 miles to gallon to 23, well, that's a 15% gain. That's not trivial. And I am a little surprised that they didn't go further with the weight reduction efforts. That might have bought them some more on that front. I expected that to be a little more of an emphasis, and it seems like it wasn't so much. I mean, they've talked about aluminum hoods and lift gate panels and probably a little weight that has been taken out of the frame with the redesign as with the pickups. But there have been big, big hints that Ford's new pickup will have significant attention paid to reducing weight. And, and you know, as, as we said with the Silverado, and I keep talking about the Silverado, uh, the new Chevy pickup, because this is all the same big de development program. GM's big SUVs are always redone with the pickups because they, they, they share underpinnings. They're built on the same frame. Uh, and, you know, here I think they maybe they stayed away from going too far with aluminum and really other materials that aren't good old American steel, because buyers of these vehicles tend to be fairly conservative in their tastes, and they're more concerned with durability and dependability over the long haul. Uh, fuel economy is important, but I think that ranks a little higher than maybe another mile per gallon on the highway or whatever. But, you know, that's a trade-off they made, and I think it'll be fine. Obviously, they know their market really well here. So to get back to your question, I think they did make enough of an improvement here, maybe a little more than enough. Ride and handling should be improved. The interior is nicely upgraded. After years of interiors that were made kind of junky to save a buck, GM has really gotten religion about making interiors nice. It's nice to see. Uh, this is so important to the sales process when people sit in the vehicle for the first time. Uh, the new V8 and aerodynamic improvements should get them some fuel economy gains. Uh, the fold flat second and third third row seats will be a big win for some buyers. Uh, they've made a bunch of high-tech safety features like collision warning radar and things like that available uh, in options packages, and I think a lot of buyers will just end up checking all the boxes and getting all of them, or going to the dealers and finding them loaded. Uh, and overall, I think we find once we drive them that they've improved the Tahoe and Suburban quite a bit while keeping the formula pretty much the same, which I think is really when you get down to it what they needed to do. So long story short, I think we give GM solid marks on these. Uh, at least a B plus, maybe an A once we drive them, and it looks pretty good. So the big SUV boom is long gone, long past us. Uh, tell me though what these two vehicles behind me mean to General Motors. 
Well, Rex, they actually mean a whole lot. I think it's interesting that the presenter here was GM's chief financial officer, Dan Ammon. Of course, he's not just a number cruncher. Uh, he's a car guy. He was a Morgan Stanley analyst who came to work at GM because he's a car guy. He drives a Corvette. Uh, he has a reputation as a talented racing type driver and so forth. I mean, he's into cars. Uh, so it's not a complete shock to see him at a product reveal. But it might be kind of a way for GM to emphasize that even now, long after the big SUV boom has gone, uh, these vehicles are still really important to GM's bottom line in North America. They're more of a niche product now, but it's a big niche and a profitable niche and a niche that includes some people with big bucks and it's one that's likely to endure. Uh, I live down the street from a big horse farm and I see, the, see these things all the time pulling horse trailers. Lots of the suburban sized Yukon Denali's, the GMC Yukon Denali's. Those are $60,000 trucks. You can load them up almost to $70,000. There's a ton of profit for GM in those prices and people buy them to go to horse shows and stuff in comfort while pulling these big trailers. There are lots of niche markets like that and it makes these a pretty big business all by themselves. I mean, Evan said that if the Tahoe and Suburban and their, you know, uh, their GMC and Cadillac cousins were broken out as a separate business, never mind the pickups, just these big SUVs, it would be a Fortune 400 company, comparable to a company like Hershey's or Campbell Soup, just these SUVs, and they still sell a lot of them. Maybe the market's declined, but GM still owns it. Between the Tahoe and the Suburban and the GMC Twins, they've already sold about 125,000 of these things this year. The total market for full-size SUVs in the U.S. is still around a quarter million a year, and GM with these vehicles has, has you know, nearly three quarters of it. That's huge, and there's just a ton of profits in these things. Edmund says the average transaction price on the Chevy and GMC versions is over $52,000. That's just huge. Lots of profits in there. And again, by making the upper level trim lines appealing, the LTZ trim on the Chevys comes with HID headlights and a bunch of cool gadgets that invites buyers to pay extra for more features. And a lot of that extra price is profit. This is the strategy we've seen work out so well for Ford. Offer a value-priced product um, and then, you know, lots of appealing options so that it gets optioned up to something fairly premium um, with a lot of profit profit built in. So yeah, it's not the massive market it was back in 2004 for full-size SUVs or whatever, but it's still a big important market here and a very, very profitable market and one that GM still absolutely dominates. Ford is barely a presence here nowadays. Uh, you know, I, I had to go look to see if they still made the Expedition at one point. They do, but they don't make very many of them. And from the looks of these new GM trucks, they should continue to do very well here and continue to essentially own this segment, uh, at least, you know, outside of the real top luxury set a part of it. Um, the, these are the dominant vehicles in this segment, and I, I, I don't see anything in these new models that suggests that's not going to continue. I think they did just fine here. All right, John, thanks for joining us, and uh, we will have much more on this unveiling throughout the week. Reporting from New York City, I'm Rex Moore for The Motley Fool.